Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Jab, and this is the all new Huawei P40 Pro. So I'm gonna do a quick unboxing and then walk you through all the new features and give you my first impressions along the way. So Huawei are actually launching three models, the P40, the P40 Pro, and the P40 Pro Plus. I'll put full pricing and availability in a pinned comment below. But I've got the Pro here, which like Samsung's Galaxy S20 Plus, will probably end up being the most popular model. So this is everything we get in the box, including the phone, obviously, a clear plastic case, and Huawei's 40 watt supercharger. Now the first thing to do when setting up the P40 Pro is to clone the apps from your old phone. This is the best way to get your apps onto the phone that may not otherwise be available in the Huawei App Gallery, since of course this doesn't support the Google Play Store. It's really straightforward, just download the phone clone app on your phone, I'm using a P30 Pro here, and it'll transfer most, but not all of your apps. So on the Pro, we get a 6.58 inch OLED screen, and the big upgrade this year is the jump to a 90 hertz refresh rate. Now of course the Galaxy S20, Oppo Find X2, and most likely the OnePlus 8 all have faster 120Hz screens. But thinking about it, like the Pixel 4, I think 90Hz on the P40 Pro is a smarter balance between smoother animations and battery life. The first time I unboxed this, the first time I picked it up, I thought I'd recognize this design somewhere else. And actually, if I grab the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus, you can see there's a remarkable similarity in terms of how the camera module is set up. Although I have to say, I really do like Huawei's matte glass finish. Which do you prefer though, glossy or matte? Vote in the poll at the top right and let me know. Personally, I think this looks much more premium and it also just feels a little bit nicer in the hand. But while I've got the S20 Plus here, which is actually is a brand new one, I haven't set this up yet, you can see the difference in that little hole punch cutout. Samsung's is much smaller. We have this uh, single little hole punch in the center on the P40 Pro, we've got this dual camera setup, which does take a good chunk out of the top left of the phone screen with the selfie camera and also an IR sensor, which helps face unlocking in low light. So actually that is quite a useful feature, but if you're playing games or watching movies, I guess your thumb may cover it, so it's not the end of the world. Now, if I bring this a little bit closer to you, you can see Huawei's new overflow edge display. And basically we have curved edges on all four sides. Uh, Huawei's designers say that they were looking at uh, the surface tension of a full glass of water and how it looks when it's just about to overflow. And that's kind of what they were going for. You just get this sort of rounding off on all the corners and it definitely does add to its sort of premium aesthetic. I really do like it. So we've got this matte glass finish on the back. I've got it in ice white, but it also comes in black and a deep sea blue, which I think may actually be the best looking version. And actually it reminds me of the OnePlus 7 series, which also used a matte glass finish. So this is actually a quad camera setup and the module itself does stick out a little bit from the phone, but not quite as much as say the Galaxy S20 Ultra, but you'll still probably wanna put a case on this so they don't get scratched up too easily. We do also get an in-screen fingerprint reader. It's an optical reader, uh, which Huawei say is now 30% bigger in terms of the area that you can use your finger on and also 30% faster than before. Although most of the time I reckon I'll just be using the face unlocking. It's the little things, but I'm really happy to see they've gone back to having a physical volume rocker here. If I actually bring up the Mate 30 Pro, this sort of digital haptic virtual volume rocker, which is very futuristic and cool, but I have to say in practice, I found it a little bit frustrating, especially when you have the phone to your ear and you can't really see or feel what you're doing. I'm actually personally pretty glad that they've gone back to the physical rocker on the P40 Pro. The screen actually doesn't curve around nearly as much as before. And also they've gone from having that uh, sort of notch at the top to the hole punch. So definitely a few different design changes there. And actually if I bring in last year's P30 Pro, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> you can see some quite significant differences in terms of the camera module. They've gone from the glossy glass to the matte glass. And also like the Mate 30, they've gone from having a notch to a hole punch. So between the P40 Pro, the P30 Pro, and then the Mate 30 Pro, certainly the Mate 30 with that round camera module is probably the most striking. Which design do you think looks best? We also get IP68 water resistance, but one thing I was a little bit surprised and disappointed by is the fact that we just get this single speaker set up. It doesn't even use the earpiece as a speaker. So that's probably my one criticism so far. 
All right, let's talk specs. And inside we get Huawei's own Kirin 990 5G chip. That's the same one used in the Mate 30 Pro 5G, along with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. So it's not a crazy powerhouse necessarily, but the Kirin chip is very capable. And with that 90 Hertz screen, everything feels fast and responsive. Software wise, we've got EMUI 10.1 on top of Android 10. And I have to say it is very nice to use. EMUI has come a long way in the past couple of years. It also supports dual 5G SIMs and is the first phone to come with Wi-Fi 6 Plus, which I must admit I actually hadn't even heard of until this was announced. And I actually can't find any reference to it even on the Wi-Fi Alliance website. I'll delve deeper for my full review, but suffice to say, you'll get the fastest and most reliable Wi-Fi with this. As for the battery, we get a 4200 mAh cell, which is the same size as last year's P30 Pro. For comparison, the Galaxy S20 Plus has a 4500 mAh cell. Historically, Huawei phones have always been quite well optimized, so while I'll test it properly in my full review, I'm not too worried. Charging comes in the form of their 40 watt supercharger, which should get it from zero to 70% in just half an hour. But it also now supports crazy fast 40 watt wireless charging, up from 27 watts before although you will need to use Huawei's own charging pad to get the full speed. And of course, it still supports reverse wireless charging for topping up other devices. Okay, I've made you wait long enough. Let's get to the best bit, the camera. And it seems to be quite a big upgrade. It's a quad lens setup with a main, ultra wide, periscope telephoto and time of flight sensor. I'm actually really excited to see what we can get out of Huawei's new sensor, which offers a good balance between the 50 megapixel resolution and the big 1 over 1.28 inch sensor size. It also uses pixel binning combining 4 into 1, so you end up with a 12.5 megapixel photo. Although in the more tab of the camera app, you can select high res to shoot in the full resolution. Huawei also say they've improved the white balance and the night mode on the P40 Pro. So to test this out, I took a few photos with the Mate 30 Pro and side by side, what do you make of the difference? Now, have you ever tried to take a photo out of a window? Maybe you're on an airplane or out of a car or something. And of course you can see the reflection. We've got pretty much the whole phone and camera module there on the fence reflecting back, which doesn't look great. Now, what we can do is take a picture and then jump into the gallery settings and you can see the outline of the phone and the camera module on the fence. Now, if I tap the little edit icon at the top right and then click on remove reflection, after a couple of seconds, it almost completely vanishes. It's actually really cool that I've not seen this on any other phone so far. So I'm shooting this with the rear camera at 4K 30. This is with the main lens and then I can switch to the wide lens. If I uh, walk a little bit, you'll get a sense of the stabilization. And then back to the main lens. And then we can zoom right in all the way up to 15 times. I'm not sure how often you'd want to use this. And then back to ultra wide. What a beautiful day. Now this little nifty dual view feature lets you record using both the ultra wide lens and the main lens at a two times zoom at the same time. And finally around the front, we have a 32 megapixel F 2.2 selfie camera, which can now also shoot video in up to 4K 60. But yeah, it looks good. It's a beautiful day, it's very sunny. <laughs> Doesn't happen a lot in the UK. I also just wanted to do a quick side-by-side -side, uh, of the selfie video versus the S20 Ultra. As I say, I'll be doing full camera comparisons, all that good stuff in another video. But uh, first of all, to show off the image quality difference and also the uh, field of view, you can see, uh, just looking at the viewfinder at least, the S20 Ultra seems to be a bit wider. I'm holding them both at arm's length, which is a little awkward, uh, but it's definitely more in the frame. And the other thing is that Huawei is saying that the P40 series uh, now has autofocus on the front camera, which I kind of assumed most selfie cameras already had. Now, warning, this is about to get very close to my face, but let's see how they both uh, handle a change in focus going up to my eye. <laughs> you never thought you wanted to see my face that close up. And then all the way back quickly. Well, they both did change focus, as you'd expect, although the S20 was a little bit slow, actually. Uh, let's do that one more time. Right up to the eyes. Yeah, the S20's got that a little bit better than the P40. It is pre-release software, of course, so bear that in mind. But uh, let me know which one you thought 
performed a little bit better. So first impressions of the P40 Pro. Well, there's a lot to get excited about here. It's got a gorgeous screen, an incredible quad camera setup, uh, solid battery life, great performance, really fast charging. It takes a lot of boxes, and I really do appreciate some of the design changes they've made, including the uh, sort of matte glass finish and bringing back the volume rocker. And also, while the hole punch is a bit of an eyesore, it is nice having that IR sensor. But of course, the main issue is the lack of Google and the Google Play Store. Now, of course, there are app workarounds. You can download APKs, you can use the party stores and I really do think that the Huawei app gallery at the rate it's growing will be a real challenger to both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store in not too long but as it stands I am still missing out on some of the apps that I want to use so it is a concern but it's something that I hope will keep getting better with time but make sure you do subscribe because I've got camera comparisons battery tests all that good stuff with other flagship phones coming very soon and also I'm gonna do a bit of a tips and tricks video all about how to get the most out of the Huawei app gallery and what the best ways are to get all the apps you need on this. Thank you so much for watching guys. Let me know what you make of the P40 Pro in the comments below and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.